Alright, fun fact. There are only three things that I can draw pretty decently. Um, number one being stick men. Number two being guffy. And number three being tectonic landforms. <laughs> Alright, in today's episode, we're going to talk about plate tectonics part 2 and um, yeah, we're going to focus on um, the different tectonic landforms, some of the keywords to take note of as well as tips uh, when it comes to studying and revising effectively for this component. So do watch all the way to the end of this video and let me know if you have any questions down in the comments below or DM me your questions on Instagram and if you have missed out on the first uh, episode on uh, plate tectonics, I'm going to put a link up here as well as down in the description box below. So uh, yeah, without further ado, let's start. Alright, since we know that in the chapter of plate tectonics there are three different plate boundaries, we're going to focus on each of them and talk about what are some of the landforms that are created there. So I'm going to start off with the easiest which is transform plate boundary and yeah, typically we would always associate transform plate boundary with earthquakes which is a tectonic hazard um, but at the same time, it's also important to recognise that at um, transform plate boundaries you can find transform faults and in this case, what is a transform fault? If you want to put it in simple terms, a transform fault is basically a fracture on the ground um, that's found between the two plates that are sliding past each other. So when we talk about plates sliding past each other, it doesn't necessarily mean that both plates are sliding in opposite directions. It can actually be two plates sliding towards the same direction, but it's just that they're sliding at different pace. So one is sliding faster than the other and therefore you can actually create a transform fault as well. So now let's move on to diversion plate boundaries. So when we talk about diversion plate boundaries, there are two different possibilities. You have OO diversions as well as CC diversions. Now I'm going to use this term so that's easier for you. So OO basically refers to oceanic oceanic plate diversions and CC will be continental continental plate diversions. All right, so Let's start with OO diversions. Basically, what I'm doing here is to show you the entire process of drawing a well-labelled diagram. Um, of course, if you're given a question that asks for a well-annotated diagram, make sure that you don't have any more explanation down in a full scap, but instead focus on writing all your explanation within the diagram as um, annotations. So um, yeah, just practice first before you go into the exam hall so that you don't spend too much time drawing your diagrams and um, end up not being able to finish a paper. Okay, so now when we have OO diversions, first thing first, draw the box, draw the relevant title and then I would say draw the overview, the layout of the entire process. What I would do is I will of course label every single layer in this case and um, because this is a generic example, uh, I would just label them as ocean, oceanic plate, uppermost mantle and asthenosphere. But if you're given um, an exam question whereby there's a figure and they've already mentioned the plates that involve do make sure that you put in the names of the relevant plates and now after you have labelled them, do make sure the next thing to do is to not forget to draw in the arrows. Now the arrows will signify the movement of the plates. So very important if it's diversion, plate boundary, draw in the arrows and followed by, in this case, um, you do notice that um, the landform that's created here is actually the mid oceanic reach. And how is it formed? Basically when two oceanic plates diverge, all right, tensional force is being exerted and over time, cracks and fissures will start to appear and as the magma rises through the cracks and fissures, they cool and solidify on the surface of the ocean floor. All right? And this process is known as seafloor spreading. So basically what we understand is that the edge of the seafloor nearest to the mid oceanic reach or I would say the zone of divergence would be the youngest rock and then as we move further and further away from the zone of divergence, basically the edge of the rock will actually get older and older because as magma rises, it cools, it solidifies, basically new seafloor is formed. So it pushes the old seafloor further and further away. 
All right, and um, yeah, so what we do notice is that this landform that's created is called the mid oceanic ridge. Now, a common mistake would be that students tend to confuse the mid oceanic ridge with the oceanic trench. So, um, I would always say um, for easy comparison, let me just show you. I'll talk about this later, but basically an oceanic trench is formed at convergence plate boundaries where an oceanic plate is being um, is involved in this process. And usually if I, when I was a student, how do I remember this? Basically, if you look at this entire diagram, you do see that it looks like a T, right? The shape of an alphabet T. So therefore, um, when there is subduction involved, there will be an oceanic trench T. <laughs> Alright, so, um, but as for diversion plate boundary, you don't see that T and therefore it's a mid-oceanic reach. I know this is stupid, but it sounds stupid, but it actually helped me during my O-level. So I hope this will help you if you have difficulty trying to remember. Um, now, as we are talking about the mid-oceanic reach, um, do take note that because um, the, the continuous process of plate diversions will result in cracks and fissures to be formed, right? So as the magma rises through all these cracks and fissures, along the entire stretch of the mid-oceanic reach, you can find um, submarine volcanoes being formed. And over time, due to multiple volcanic eruptions, the submarine volcanoes can rise in terms of its size, and therefore they can rise above the surface of the water forming a volcanic island. So if you have a series of volcanic islands, then in this case, you will call it a volcanic island arc. Okay, so I hope this diagram is useful in helping you to explain OO plate diversions. So um, to put things into perspective, what I've done is that I've drawn another diagram to help you explain the formation of Iceland. Alright, so for the formation of Iceland, you would realize that I've written over here it's a volcanic island and we should know by now that Iceland is actually found in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean between the two plates which is the North American plate as well as the Eurasian plate. Alright, so um, now, how is Iceland formed? So when we draw the diagram, you realize that it's pretty similar to what we've drawn previously. It's just that the difference would be that Iceland is a volcanic island. That's why it's above the surface of the water. So same thing, like I said just now, when you're labeling your diagram, do make sure that if you know the specific plate that's involved in this process, do um, state down the plate name. And of course, the ocean in this case, the Atlantic Ocean. So um, yeah, so if you want to really explain the formation of Iceland, it will go something like this. Um, as the oceanic North American plate diverges from the oceanic Eurasian plate, tensional force is being exerted. All right, as the magma rises through the cracks and fissures to the surface of the seafloor, it contributes to the formation of the mid-Atlantic reach. So along the mid-Atlantic reach, the magma may continue to rise, giving rise to submarine volcanoes. So due to multiple volcanic eruption, the submarine volcanoes may rise above the surface of the water, or you can say rise above the surface of the Atlantic Ocean, forming volcanic islands such as Iceland. Okay, so it's actually pretty straightforward. So you realize that I didn't have a script with me, but instead I'm using this diagram to explain. So um, what you should be doing um, in this case when you're doing a revision is to not memorize the entire paragraph or explanation in a textbook. But instead, what you can do is do something that I always tell my students to do, and that is to identify the keywords and remember them. So once you have the keywords, you can write your explanation in any way you want. Uh, basically, you wouldn't go that far off. So what are some of the keywords that I've used just now? So things like oceanic plate, okay? And of course, I did mention a specific plate name. So oceanic, diverge, tensional force, magma, cracks and fissures, seafloor spreading, meet oceanic reach, submarine volcanoes, multiple volcanic eruptions, and volcanic island. Okay, so with all these keywords, basically you will be able to form an explanation 
for OO Diversions and yeah, I hope this is useful for you. And now we're going to move on to CC Diversions and there are so many possibilities for this. So um, yeah, give me a second. Alright, so what we have here is the diagram for continental continental plate diversions and you would notice that when I draw this diagram, I actually draw multiple um, fractures as well as fault lines and um, the sinking of the center block of land and uh, this is more of um, actual visualization of what's happening during CC diversions. Later on, I will show you a separate diagram to zoom in into what's happening over here. So both diagram works, so it depends on how you want to explain your um, answers. So in this case, when two continental plate diverges, what you notice is that the tensional force will result in the formation of fault lines um, as well as cracks on the surface of the continental crust. And uh, due to the pull of gravity, you will notice that the center block of land will start sinking along the fault lines. And over time, this will form a linear depression. And we will call that linear depression as rift valleys. And um, the blocks of land that are standing, um, that are steep-sided as well, they will be known as block mountains in this case. Alright, so nothing fancy, nothing difficult. But what you do notice is that because of the divergence and the tensional force, as well as the cracks and fissures that are formed. In this case, you will notice that magma may also exploit all these lines of weaknesses to form volcanoes along the Rift Valley. So one good example is to look at the Great East African Rift Valley and you will notice that dotted along the East African Rift Valley, you have volcanoes as well. And sometimes you do have volcanic lakes as well. And that's because of um, the accumulation of rainwater. Um, and yeah, I would say that that um, for this diagram, this will work. At the same time, if you choose to draw something like this, um, it would work as well. Now, um, in this case, I've drawn a series of diagrams to show you what's happening at um, CC Divergence. So first diagram, you will notice that I'm just showing you the different layers of rocks on the continental crust. So as the two continental plates are diverging, what happens here is that fault lines can be created. And then over time, due to the continuous tensional force that's exerted, um, the center block of land will actually slide down along the fault lines, forming this linear depression known as the Rift Valley. And you can also labor the blocks of land that are standing with steep sides as block mountains. All right, so I guess um, both works. So it really depends on which you are, which one you would like to choose and you're more comfortable explaining. Um, and of course, if you're trying to explain the formation of volcanoes along the Rift Valley, then of course this diagram would be better. All right, next I'm gonna focus on convergence plate boundaries. And this time around, there are three different possibilities. We have OO, CC, as well as OC convergence. So I'm gonna start off with OO convergence. All right, so for oceanic, oceanic plate convergence, um, basically we have to first understand the characteristics of um, the continental as well as oceanic plates. So of course, um, looking at the characteristics of two plates, um, they differ in terms of their thickness or the depth. Um, for continental plates, they are thicker and then oceanic plates of course they are thinner and that's why you would notice that in the drawings you can actually show the thickness especially if you're drawing out the layers and then um, now for oceanic plates they are denser as compared to continental plates and therefore in the process of plate conversions, you will notice that as long as an oceanic plate is involved there will be subduction Okay, all right, so in this particular explanation, you will realize that the diagram actually shows um, two oceanic plates converging towards each other. So like I said, just now do label the different layers and then do drawing the arrows to show the convergence process. Um, the denser plate, or you can say that the faster moving oceanic plate will be the one that's subducting. At a point of subduction, that is where you can find the oceanic trench. And what exactly is an oceanic trench? Basically, it's a linear depression that's found at the point of subduction. Okay, so um, apart from that, of course, we have to understand that part of the subducted plate 
will actually melt to form magma and this magma will actually rise through the cracks and fissures and then it will form a submarine volcano on the overlying oceanic plate. Okay, this overlying oceanic plate will be the one that's less dense or it's slower moving because like um, our general understanding is that the denser plate will be the one that's subducting but alternatively, if both are of the same density, then you've got to look at the speed at which the plates are moving. So the faster moving plate will always be the one that's subducting. Okay, so now. As you form the submarine volcano on the overlying plate, um, due to multiple volcanic eruptions, this submarine volcano can actually rise above the surface of the water, forming a volcanic island. Alright, so for continental continental plate conversions, this is diagram and uh, yeah you would notice that this diagram is interesting because uh, different people draw it differently this is how I like to draw it uh, there's no right or wrong but uh, basically the key idea must be that when two continental plates converge notice they actually resist subduction this is because of the nature of the continental plate um, they are basically light and buoyant they are not dense um, and therefore they would not actually subduct at all it's just like if you have two buoyant objects and you push them towards each other on uh, water and what you will notice is that they will be forced upwards rather than uh, forced downwards due to the buoyant nature so um, now just visualize the continental plate as two buoyant rocks when you push them towards each other instead of subducting they're forced upwards so in this case I would explain it as the edges of the continental plates will buckle and fold upwards or sideways depending on the context and the scenario and this will lead to the formation of fold mountains. So one good example would be the Himalayas fold mountains due to the convergence of the continental Indian plate and the continental Eurasian plate. Alright, so um, this gave rise to the highest peak in the world which is known as Mount Everest at 8,800 blah blah meters. Alright, so um, yeah, I hope this is actually useful. Um, if you notice my phone mountain is drawn in this manner because I want to show that the folding process, you actually can observe the distinct layers of the rocks on phone mountains. And this is true in um, various phone mountains contexts. If you look at an exposed rock face, you actually can observe the different layers and the folds itself. Alright, so now I'm going to show you the last one which is OC conversions. So if you recall, the OO conversions diagram, right? We have subduction of the denser oceanic plate, and then you have the formation of a submarine volcano. You have an oceanic trench over here, and then CC conversions basically, you have four mountains, there is no subduction. So, what happens when you have OC conversions? Now, ta da! This is the diagram. Now basically, when you have an oceanic plate converging with a continental plate, you will notice that, of course, the oceanic plate will be the one that's subducting because of this dense nature. So as the oceanic plate converges with the continental plate, the denser oceanic plate will subduct beneath the less dense continental plate. And at the point of subduction, an oceanic trench is formed and then part of the subducted plate will melt to form magma and the magma will rise through the cracks and fissures to form the volcano on the overlying continental plate and due to the nature of continental plates that they are light and buoyant the edges of the continental plate will buckle and fold upwards and sideways to form fold mountains or we can say fold mountain ranges all right so this is basically the overview of OC conversions you actually do notice that it's a combination of both OO and CC conversions right so yeah I guess um, this is the best way to illustrate to you what's happening over here and to sum it all up I have an example and that is Mount St. Helens. I know some of you might not know where Mount St. Helens is but in examinations they wouldn't usually just ask you to explain oh um, explain what happens at OO conversions they usually don't ask a question like that um, but instead what you will notice is that they will give you a figure or it can even be a map and then they would ask you to explain what's happening at 
point A or if they draw a line of point A to B and they ask you to explain what are the tectonic landforms that are created along line A, B. Then in this case, you're going to make sure that you are able to identify the types of plates as well as the name of the plates that are involved and then recall whether is it um, OO the divergence or OC conversions. So you're going to use all that you have understood from um, the different diagrams that we've drawn to help you explain how that particular landform is created. Okay, so now in this case for Mount St. Helens, um, background info, it's actually a stratovolcano. Um, it's formed between the Yuan Di Fuka plate and the North American plate. If you're wondering where is this, this is basically um, a plate that is just beside the Pacific plate um, and then it's an oceanic plate and then for the North American plate, it is a continental plate and yeah, so this is the background info. So now you're required to explain how is Mount St. Helens formed. So um, now, if you look at this diagram, uh, first of all, of course, label it correctly. And then now when you draw the diagram, um, we need to understand that this um, Mount St. Helens is formed through the process of subduction of the oceanic plate. So in this case, it's the Yuan Di Fuka plate that's subducted and then um, you have the Pacific Ocean that's above the plate and now how do we explain this so as the denser Yuan Di Fuka oceanic plate subducts beneath the less dense North American plate all right um, part of the subducted plate melts to form magma as the magma rises through the cracks and fissures it will actually form the volcano on the overlying North American plate known as Mount St. Helens okay so of course when you're drawing a diagram uh, it's also important to do not just focus on what the question is asking for but also to focus on what are the other landforms um, they are created at that particular plate boundary. In this case, don't forget the oceanic trench as well as the fall mountain range. And if you do really read up, you should know that the fall mountain range is actually the Cascade Fall Mountain Range. Alright, so now what I've done over here, and pardon my handwriting. You know, you know during um, Teacher's Day, one of the students actually wrote down, Miss Loon, happy Teacher's Day and please improve on your penmanship. <laughs> so um, you should know how horrible my handwriting is. I'm, I'm really working on it. Um, yeah, basically this is the explanation. I'm gonna show you um, and hope you can see it. So first of all, maybe I should stand here. All right, first of all, the formation of Mount St. Helens is caused by, now tell me the process that's happening over there. So caused by the conversions of, now before you just tell me the plate itself, identify which type of a plate it is. So oceanic Yuan Di Fuka plate and the continental North American plate. Now usually this statement itself is worth one mark. All right, as we move on, as the oceanic plate is denser, the compressional force exerted between the two plates forces the Yuan Di Fuka plate to subduct beneath the less dense North American plate. So what's the keyword over here? You have denser plate, compressional force, subduct. All right. So as part of the subducted Yuan Di Fuka plate melts to form magma, the magma rises through the cracks and fissures. If you prefer to talk about lines of weaknesses, then in this case you can mention that the magma exploits the lines of weaknesses to the surface of the North American plate. So over time, the continuous upward movement of the magma will lead to the formation of a stratovolcano and we have mentioned this in the previous video that at conversion plate boundaries, stratovolcanoes are formed. All right, due to the high silica content of the lava, you can go and watch the video, okay? And um, yeah, formation of a stratovolcano known as Mount St. Helens. And you will notice that I end off the explanation over here because the question is asking about formation of Mount St. Helens. But if you look back at the diagram, 
you will notice that if they are actually um, you know if you're given a map and they actually draw um, point A to B and you're explaining what's happening between point A to B then in this case you have to include in your explanation that um, at the point of subduction an oceanic trench is formed that's one mark and then followed by um, as the continental North American plate is light and buoyant. The ages of the continental plate will actually buckle and fall upwards and sideways to form the Cascade Fall Mountain Range. That's another mark. Alright, so I hope this is actually useful and um, yeah, when you are explaining, do remember, I'm not expecting you to memorize everything but what you should do is actually to remember all the keywords. So I hope you can go back a couple of uh, minutes before this and just screenshot this explanation or maybe you can do it now all right screenshot this and take a close look at oops all the different um, boxes uh, that I've drawn and all these boxes that I've drawn are actually highlighting the keywords that you should remember so that instead of memorizing the entire paragraph you just remember the keywords and it will help you form your explanation and I hope this video has been useful to all of you and yeah I think this is a wrap for plate tectonics and I'm going to move on to the chapter of weather and climate next so do watch this space and let me know if you have any comments and we'll see each other again